your brother has to fight just to get there. There are so many reasons why they have to stay at home or to go elsewhere. But because God has delivered us to walk a straight there to be given to the house of the Lord, we are here today to try our best to guide our prayers to Almighty God. God is a good God, even in a bad day. God is a deliverer. God is a provider. God is a healer. God can do all things. God must not be marginalized. Praise God. God must not be quarantined. God must not be measured. God must not be humanized. Amen. How many people know that God, even though He is invisible, He can be found. God is not the term that God is ultimate. God cannot be measured. God cannot, amen. God, amen. Even though He cannot be explained, but He can be experienced. Praise God. So we thank God today. I'm so glad today to be here to share worship. If you in the summer place, it's really been a long time. I haven't been here. And as I look around, I certainly admire it. the fine building that I have left the last time I was here. In the absence of our beloved elder, Pastor Waters, I certainly have to make mention of him. Amen. Most of you would have known that 2003, he invited me to come here and to share worship. Three and a half years I spent here, as most of you would have known, and certainly those were fitting times, enjoyable times, and certainly, I certainly remember those great times which I spent with you. And it really, amen, is uh, really important for me just to come and to share worship with you in the name of Jesus. In his absence, in his illness, we certainly ought to remember him and his beloved wife. We certainly pray for his strength, but the Lord will certainly have his way. Let me take time out to extend greetings to somebody who I remember to ask, the elder statesman. Elder Nolan and his beloved wife, Evangelist Nolan. And I want you to understand that these two people are the cradle, a cradle of this church way back as the origin, the foundation. We are certainly responsible for this and we thank God for the illustrious work that they have put in for the upkeep and the upbringing of this church. God bless them in Jesus' name. Assistant Pastor, former National Youth President, my brother and good friend, Elder A.R.T. Thomas and his beloved wife, I want to extend greetings to them in Jesus' name. To our men's president, Elder Samuels and his beloved wife, Lady Samuels, to Dr. Lady Dr. Shirley Gardner, Elder Brian, and to all the other ministerial staff. But I would fail me. I know you're not to be offended if I don't sing you out and call your name. Is that all right? Praise God. God bless you because you have already been greeted. But to all of you who are tasked with ministerial responsibility, Deaconess Wilshire and Missionary Brian and Missionary McDonald, and the long list goes on, Missionary Colbert. God bless all of you who have certainly impressed the heart of the pastor as the Lord has given you gift that must be utilized in the church. And the Lord has allowed you to use different offices. Some is by title, some is by gift. 
But you have used this position by ordination and complete, solidified by ordination. I want you to encourage you that as ministerial personnel, you have to be the role model. You have to be strong. You have to initiate and make sure you want to follow. When there is cause and reason for you to crumble and to capitulate and to topple over, you have to bear up. You are in the capacity of the four Levi priests who was designed in the book of Joshua to carry the most holy thing in Israel that was called the Ark of the Covenant. And as much as Judah was the royal tribe and the praise tribe of life, Levi was the most insignificant tribe. They didn't have earthly accolades like what we have today. They were not from a royal ethnic background, but they were selected by God. Some of us our choice, if it was up to men, we would never occupy certain position in the church. Is that all right when we say that? But God, some people have the opportunity to look at our genealogy, look at where we come from. I want you to know it's not where you come from, it's where you're going. And our past does not define our present, neither validate our future. So I want you to understand that the holy by priests, they were humanistically despised and forgotten and rejected. But God chose them to be the bearer of the most holy thing in Israel, the Ark of the Covenant. And they carry it with pride and even though the weight of the Ark of the Covenant bear their shoulders sometimes, but they carry it with dignity. So ministers, you are laid and tasked with responsibility. So I charge you before God and before the Lord Jesus Christ to be strong in critical time, even this time in which we live in. So I salute you and greet you with Jesus name. All of the sisters and brothers and my good friend of this church, visiting friends, and all of you who have obtained mercy through the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus, and who are called to the inheritance that is kept under fire that is reserved in heaven for you, where no one can corrupt and no thief can break you and steal. To you I say praise you, the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. Happy Valentine's Day. Whichever and whatever meaning of significance it has to you, God bless you. To all the men, men, I want to greet you, especially in Jesus' name. And pray to God that you will show you your threefold responsibility. Being prophet, priest, and king as a prophet. You are responsible to take the lead, initiate, to bring the word to your family. As a priest, you are laid with the responsibility to represent your family. And as a king, you must rule your family. Is that all right? Praise God. God bless you in Jesus' name. Glad to be here traveling all the way from Manchester. In spite of the restriction, in spite of the unprecedented time in which we live. Never have we seen such a time. It's strange to us. Isn't that so? But God is still able. Amen. Traveling from Temple to Madrid, Madrid to Maypen, to Spanish Town, and God helped me to be here. I'm glad today to see your order and to uh, feel the presence of God and to see that in spite of the absence of elder waters, that the church still continue. People are still here, able people to carry on the work of the Lord. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. With your priors and with the allowance of God, I want you 
speak to you from the book of Exodus chapter 1 as I consult the Lord for the word. The Lord sends me to Exodus chapter 1 today. I want you to stand to your feet as we show respect to the reading of God's word as we be sensitive as we look for the Lord for the word in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. One more time, one more time, he allowed us to come together. One more time, oh, one more time, one more time, he allowed us to come together. One more time, I'm sitting one more Jesus. 
Some of you here today, just your existence is provocative to the enemy. Just who you are, your personality, in the recipe of God, who God allowed you to be, can cause unprecedented trouble. So Pharaoh did his best to restrain and to subordinate Israel. But in verse 12 of Exodus 1, I just read one verse. He said, if you're a preacher, you must be able to preach on one verse in the Bible. Is that all right? Praise God. Don't have to read a chapter. So look with me to verse 12. And this was after Pharaoh did everything to shut down the people, to stifle, to suffocate, and to wipe them out. Like what is threatening against the world today. But in verse 12, the Bible said, the more they afflict them, the more they multiply and grow, God Almighty, the more you put pressure upon them, the more they multiply and grow. And listen to the last clause. And the Egyptians, they were grieved because of the children of Israel. Put your Bibles down. Look at somebody standing three feet or four feet from you. And just say to them, you can be stripped to your job. Come on, tell somebody you can be stripped to your job. I don't care who you are. I don't care of your titles. I don't care of your accolades. I don't care of your position. But you can be straight to your job. But your head Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for sending this word. This is us. We pray today that the mystery that is wrapped up in this world, you'll enfold it that our spirit can be rejuvenated, revitalize us, lift us from humanistic ideology to prophetic utterance. Even me today, I'm asking you, can you trust me another time with your words? I'm asking you, can you trust me another time with your anointing? Back me up the day, Holy Ghost. Allow me freedom of speech that I will speak by your allowance that somebody who come for a word will go home with a word. Hold my hands, carry the truth this today. In Jesus' name, lift your hands and give God a praise. Hallelujah. And look at somebody and tell them you can be strict for your job. No matter what this stripping is all about, but it's for your own benefit, you'll be listening Praise God. Prophetic utterance. What has been spoken? What has been catapulted in the atmosphere by human being can be catastrophic and can be devastating. Powerful men exist on the planet who is who has been allowed by powerful forces demonically orchestrated and their analogy can cause devastating effect can only be intercepted and counteracted by force which exists that is higher and more qualified than what they are able to do. Brothers and sisters, as we become awakened to consciousness, as 
as he faced reality, living such a time like this, in 2019, no apostle, no prophet, no pastor, no anointed prophetess saw this time that we're living in coming. This time, this era came upon us unaware. To those who was not prepared for such a time, we have been hit with this pandemic, which I said is never been seen, and it has caused a devastating, crippling effect. Not only to the world economy, finance, an unprecedented number of people has been killed. People has been traumatized, humiliated, never before in the history of this 21st century, uh, the 19th century, which is a foreign to us. We have never seen such a time like it. Our existence here on earth now is under threat. But there must be a group of people who has to be convinced that there is a God who exists, who has the capability to carry us through. We have to be convicted to the point in which we have to come to the place that we get to make a determination whether we're going to trust God through this or we're going to resort our trust to the World Health Organization. Can you hear what I'm saying? We need to understand, brothers and sisters, that being a part of the unit, as I heard uh, Elder Samuel spoke about, the special forces which is equipped to survive under adverse challenge, adverse. Uh, uh, effect, they are able, they are well trained, and he enlightened those people uh, to the church of the living God. Uh, Israel, the children of Israel, uh, they were a prophetic army, uh, and in spite of what they were undergoing, uh, they were destined to survive. I'm here today finding somebody to today to let you know that in spite of what you're currently going through, that there are some people that God has anointed to survive. And it doesn't matter what the enemy throw at them. They have the capability to withstand. They can able, oh God, to stand in any challenge because they are made to exist in critical time. Can you hear me? They are made to stand. They are made to serve the material. That it doesn't matter what you throw at them. They are like the old tree bent but can't be broken. Oh, there are people here. Can I find somebody to preach to? A people are here and their outward appearance look good. And they stand strong in the church. And it's not that somebody even try to shut them down. It's not that somebody even try to demoralize them. They're being to hell and high water. But they are labeled to stand. Some people can't backslide. They struggle like this and stumble. But they just can't backslide. 
Jesus walked in the Let us push. Please close your eyes. Holy Ghost has been forgotten. Huh? They don't
So every time I saw that company, you say, God Almighty. But Sarah, standing, looking at Israel, God, stand up in the middle, in the of darkness, and Pharaoh of us, Israel. God Almighty. Look at somebody and say, Time security. Time security. And I want to put you in your queue here with a catch to come with a viral so last in February. It's not the mass that is sanitized. It's not because you are killed for why you are catching, but because you are under time security. Blood of Jesus. In the quiet. It's because you are under time security. When Pharaoh looks for you, when Pharaoh tries to match your time security, when they come on the bottom of the trash, somebody should be unvaccinated right now. From the green, for time security, time security, and because the blood of Jesus. Come on, sister, rub your belly like that. 
I said, I rise. Yeah, you know we are to be not. Say, my rise of the Lord of Jesus. Come on, brother. What the best I said, prostate cancer. The blood of Jesus. Diabetes. Oh, <laughs> 
Pharisees came to Jesus. Why did Moses give the people a bill of divorce? Jesus says the cause of the heart is in the people. But in the beginning it was not so. We must go back to the beginning. We must talk, transparent, and becoming sympathetic and apologetic and empathetic and legalizing things that was not from the beginning. In the beginning it was not so. One wife. One husband. I don't care how you are wife. Look, I don't care how you are funny. He is the most handsome. I feel you. Dress him up. Fix him up. For him, he, he is the best. I do come to you. Woo! I don't come with this. I don't come with this. I don't care how your wife look. You can gaze at another. She is not your property. You will be found. You will be accused of stealing love. And you don't have no papers to show. She don't belong to you. And you don't belong to you. But still, you have the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Separate yourself! Marriage! Divorce and marriage again is nothing on the church room. Nothing on the apostolic church room. Nothing! Push off the door! But we need back the church. Somebody will say, I'm oh, weak. Need the Holy Ghost not yet baptized, not yet saved. The devil has your name written on a billboard, put it up in here. And you know what is written on the billboard? Wanted, get out of here. I feel it. And I challenge you to come to this altar today. We under pressure, crying, insignificant, rejected, unwelcome. Walk to his unto today. Come, 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 come. Get up and see that. I got enough anointing to preach until three o'clock this afternoon. Come, 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 come. I hear the Holy Ghost say, like a ship tossing and drifting, shattered by an angry wind, bound in the storm of life are raging, and the fury is calling me. I wonder what I have done. I'm a musician. I made the way so hard to run. I say to my soul, Don't you worry. Nothing may come away. It's going to press my foot and go because she falls in a tree. Come on, musician. Shackled by a high. Woo! Like yourself, you're on 